Welcome to part one of power series. The goals of this video are to define a power series and also to determine the radius and interval of convergence when centered about x equals zero. Part two will show how to solve problems when it's not centered at zero. A power series in one variable is an infinite series in the form as we see here, written using sigma notation as well as expanded. This power series here is centered at c and a sub n represents the coefficient of the nth term and the value of x will vary around c. And if the power series is centered at c equals zero, the power series would simplify to the series that we see here. A power series will converge for some values of x and may diverge for others. So our main goal for this video is to determine the interval for which the series converges. All power series will converge at x equals c where it's centered. If c is not the only convergent point, then there is always a number r, often called the radius, that is greater than zero or less than or equal to infinity, such that the series will converge whenever the distance between x and c is less than r, and diverges when the distance between x and c is greater than r and this number r is called the radius of convergence of the power series. So this is how we'll approach finding the interval of convergence. If r is equal to zero, the power series only converges at c. If r equals infinity, then the power series converges for all values of x. And if we do find a specific value for r, r tells us the series will converge on the open interval from c minus r to c plus r. Notice this is an open interval. However, to determine the interval of convergence, we, we do have to check the two endpoints to determine if it converges or diverges at those two points. And this information will give us the interval of convergence. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Here we have a power series, and we'll start by finding the radius of convergence. So we need to apply one of the convergence tests to determine for which values of x this series will converge. And since we have an exponential in our formula, we'll go ahead and apply the ratio test as we see here. So we'll take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n. So the numerator will be a sub n plus one, so we'll replace n with n plus one. And our denominator will be a sub n, which is just n times x to the nth. Now we're not including negative one to the power of n because we are taking the absolute value. So now we'll go ahead and simplify this. So the n plus one over n does not simplify out. But here we have x to the n plus one divided by x to the n. There's one more factor of x in the numerator, so we're left with an x in the numerator. Now as n approaches infinity, n plus one divided by n approaches one, so this limit is equal to the absolute value of x. Remember, using the ratio test, this limit must be less than one. So in order for this power series to converge, the absolute value of x must be less than one. This tells us that the radius of convergence is equal to one. And since this power series is centered at x equals zero, that means the open interval of convergence will be zero minus one all the way to zero plus one, which means we know that it converges from negative one to positive one, but to determine the true interval of convergence, we do have to test whether this power series converges or diverges at the endpoints or negative one and positive one. So we'll do that by replacing x with negative one and positive one and see if that series converges or diverges. Let's go ahead and do that on the next screen. So here is the given power series. We know for sure this power series converges on the open interval from negative one to positive one, but now we need to see what's happening at negative one and positive one. So when x equals negative one, we'll have the summation from one to infinity of negative one to the n times n times negative one to the n again. Well, negative one to the n times negative one to the n will always be positive one. So this leaves us with the summation from n equals one to infinity of n. Well, using the nth term divergent test, if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which in this case is just n, 
this does not equal zero. Therefore, the series diverges at x equals negative one. So we cannot include negative one as part of the interval of convergence. Now let's see what happens when x equals one. If x equals one, we'll have one to the nth. And even though this series does alternate, if we take the limit of a sub n, we still have the limit as n approaches infinity of n, which again doesn't equal zero. So by the nth term divergent test, the series also diverges at x equals one. So since the series diverges at the endpoints of negative one and positive one, this open interval is the interval of convergence. Let's go ahead and try another one. Notice this power series also has an exponential part, letting us know that the ratio test is probably going to be a good choice to determine the radius of convergence. So let's go ahead and apply the ratio test again. We'll have the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus one, which will be x to the n plus one divided by n plus one. And then instead of dividing by a sub n, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So instead of x to the n divided by n, we'll have n divided by x to the power of n. Now let's go ahead and simplify this. Notice we have one more factor of x in the numerator, so we'll have x times n divided by n plus one. So as n approaches infinity, we have n over n plus one. This approaches one, so this limit is equal to the absolute value of x, which must again be less than one. So this tells us the radius of convergence is equal to one. And again, since this power series is centered at x equals zero, the open interval of convergence will be from zero minus one to zero plus one, or from negative one to one. So now we'll test this power series to see if it converges or diverges at negative one and one, just like we did on the last problem. Let's first let x equal negative one. So we'll have negative one to the n times negative one to the n all over n. And again, negative one to the n times negative one to the n equals positive one. So we have one over n. And we should recognize this as the harmonic series which we know diverges from the p-series test where p is equal to positive one. Now let's see what happens when x equals one. So we'll have negative one to the n times one to the nth divided by n well, one to the nth will always be one. And we should recognize this as the alternating harmonic series, which does converge. But let's go ahead and apply the alternating series test. So we first need to check to make sure the limit of a sub n is equal to zero as n approaches infinity. So we'll have the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n, which does equal zero, that's the first check. And then we need to make sure that zero is less than a sub n plus one, which is less than a sub n. So a sub n plus one would be one over n plus one. And a sub n, of course, is just one over n. Well, this fraction here has larger denominators, so therefore it will always be less than one over n. So the second condition is also met. So by the alternating series test, the series converges at x equals one. So the series diverged at negative one, so we cannot include that endpoint, but it does converge at x equals one, so we do have to include one in the interval of convergence. So the interval of convergence will be from negative one to positive one, where it's open on negative one and closed on positive one. That's gonna do it for this first video. We'll take a look at some additional examples in part two. Thank you for watching.